Hi and welcome to another episode of Peacemake TV. In this video we're going to be checking out a new feature that's been added into Elementor and that's the ability to use the sharing buttons for social networks. So we've got things like Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and so on and a whole range of customization that we can use to fine tune them and make sure they look exactly how we want them to inside the development theme that we're going to be using. So let's take a look at how they work, go through the entire process of setting them up, how we can tweak them and configure them, and give you a good understanding of exactly how to use this new Elementor feature. Okay, so I've already jumped into the back end of my installation of WordPress and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through and show you how to use this new feature. So we've already got a page set up, we've gone through and done this in the past. All I need to do now is switch Elementor on so we can start editing it inside the Elementor editor. So we're going to click on that, that's going to open it up, load it in and we'll start working on our layout. So you can see we've got a normal looking page, all the normal things we'd expect to see, your navigation and so on. So we're going to just jump down to the bottom, get rid of anything I don't want in here. I don't want this section so I'm just going to come in and delete that. So we're now ready to drop in those social icons. So all we need to do is scroll down through the different readable widgets and you can see under the pro elements we now have an option to share buttons. So what we need to do is just drag that down, drop that into our interface and you can see that automatically brings up the preview of the first couple of buttons that are set up as default. So you can see we've got Facebook, Google, Twitter and LinkedIn, but we're not limited to those. We can go in and add a lot more social networks and configure everything about them. So if we take a look on the left hand side, you can see we now have the context options that are available for this specific widget we've just selected. So you can see the first thing we have is the share buttons. And as I just said, we've got Facebook, Google, Twitter, and LinkedIn. We can change any of those. If we don't want to use them, we can just simply expand it out, change the net where we want in there. And as you can see, we have a whole range of different popular options in there. So if I wanted to make this something like Reddit, for example, I can do that. You can see that automatically picks up the icon that's used for Reddit, changes the color scheme, and does a whole range of different things for us. Let's just chuck that back in to be in Facebook. If I want to add a new social network in, I can simply click Add Item. You can see that now adds in a fifth item in this instance, and I can now change that to something else. So let's come down and say we want Tumblr for this example. We'll leave the custom label. I don't want anything in there, but if I did, I could come in and put in whatever I wanted. So I can say anything I want to put in there. So I can fine-tune this and tweak this to my heart's content. And as always, with anything to do with Elementor, if I take that out, it puts it in with the default information in there. Again, really quick and easy. If I wanted to copy this, I can do that. If I want to get rid of this, I can just click on the X. That'll remove it from the list, so we just click. Get rid of that. We're now back down to our four initial social networks. So that's how easy it is to add more or take any away, update them, change them, do whatever we want with the actual button itself. Now if we scroll down, we can take a look at how we want to view the button, how it's going to be displayed. First option we have is icon and text. So you can see we get in, in this example the Facebook icon or logo and we've got Facebook written after it. We can come in and choose what we want in there. We might not want to put the actual text in there. We might just want to use the icon. Well, we can do that simply and easily. So you want to save space. We don't have a huge amount of space on there. We want to have a lot of the social networks. We can easily just remove the text and just use the icons on their own. If we want to put the back in, we can come back in and say, well, we don't want the icons. We just want text or the third option we had initially, which is icons and text. You can see with these, when we choose different options, that will change the different options that are down below. So with the icon, for example, we now have the skin, the shape, and so on. If I change that to text, you can see that changes again. So we now have the option to put a count in there, a gradient. And if we go back to having icons and text, we have pretty much everything on there. So if I want to put a counter, I can simply just check that, enable that, and that will now automatically put in the counter for the number of people that have liked this particular page. So you can see we can easily do that. I can turn that on and off. I can also do the same thing with the label. I can enable or disable that. I can come down and choose the type of skin that I want to use as well. So at the moment we have gradient, but we have a range of different options available. So if we wanted to, we could use framed, or we could use flat, or we can just use a boxed icon, for example. So again, a lot of options there to fine tune and configure the way that this looks. Next up, we've got the shape, so we can have it as it is at the moment, which is square, or we can round the corners off to give it a much more smooth look, or we can come down and we can choose circle, and you can see that will now sort of make a pill. 
But if we change that to the icon, for example, they become fully round. So the nice thing with most things with Elemental like this is there's a lot of thought and consideration gone into the way that the different elements are laid out and how they'll interact based upon the different settings that you choose. So you're going to know it's going to look good no matter what you do. Then we've got the option for columns. And you can see we've got the icon that allows us to choose the number of columns based upon the device that's being viewed on. So whether we're looking at a tablet or we're looking at a mobile phone or we're looking at a desktop, we can choose the number of columns based upon the device. And if I click on the icon, you can see that allows me to choose whichever one I want and then set the number of columns that are going to be displayed on that specific device. Let's just switch back to the desktop. You can see if I now change this to three, for example, that'll automatically resize them, drop them down now so we get laid out as we want. Or we can come back down, we can say we want one, or we go back and have four in there. So everything is now nicely laid out and nice and neat. And this obviously will change the size based upon the number of columns that you're viewing this in. So if we had smaller columns, these buttons would be smaller, but you still have four in a, or four columns. Then you can see we've got the option for the target URL. In other words, what happens when the user interacts with the button and they click on it? Does it stay on the current page? In other words, it doesn't open up a new tab and we go to the relevant Facebook, Google Plus or so on page. Or do we want it to be a custom target? So we can click on that. You can see we can now just set this to be a custom URL if we want to. So we can specify it goes to an individual Facebook page or Facebook group or something along those lines, whatever you think is relevant. And again, like I say, we can switch back and forth between those two. So now that we've gone through the content tab, we can just jump over to the style tab. And this is where we can fine tune and configure the look of each one of those buttons. So you can see we've got the same as we had before. We can switch between the different devices. So if I click on this symbol, we can now set up different column gaps, row gaps, and so on, based upon the device that the page is being viewed on. Let's just jump back to the desktop just to keep it simple. So you can see if I start to adjust the column gap, you'll see each one of the buttons now becomes either larger or smaller to compensate for the increased or decreased gap we specify in there. Let's put that back to 10. And the same goes with the row gap. So if we had multiple rows, so we just jump back over to this and we'll set this to be two and two. You'll see now if I adjust the row gap, that'll adjust the height in between each one of those elements and adjust it accordingly. Again, we can control this on a device by device basis as well. Button size, we can adjust that so you can see that will increase or decrease the actual physical size of the button. Then we've got the icon size, which allows us to change the size of the icon so we can fine tune and tweak that. And then finally, we have the button height. So we can get really detailed in exactly how we want these buttons to look. You can come down, we've got the option below that then to choose from the official color, or we can create custom colors. Now, obviously, I would suggest you kind of leave them to be the default colors because that's kind of what's associated with those different types of social networks. But you have the option if you want to, to custom fine tune this to make a color palette that works with your specific website. I'm just gonna jump back over to the official color and leave it as is. You can see then the final option we have is typography and we can enable or disable that. By default it's disabled, so it's gonna pick up and use the fonts that are associated with the style sheet that's being used for this specific section on this specific widget. But we can override that. If we click that on, you can see we can now come in and we can adjust all different aspects of the font that's going to be used in there. So if you wanted your font to stay in line with the font that's being used throughout your entire website, then you could easily come into this, choose the font family that you want, search through, find one that's going to be relevant to you for your site, and adjust that. And again, you can go in and adjust the weight, the transform, the style, the letter spacing based upon the device that's being viewed on. So you get a huge amount of control of exactly how you want these to be displayed. So let's just put that back to being switched off. And then finally, if we just jump over to the advanced tab, you'll see we have all the normal options in there where we can adjust the margins, the padding based upon the device that's being used, whether we want some animation when it comes in, if we want to specify a CSS ID or class so we can specifically target that with an external style sheet, we can do that. We've also got the background and border, the responsive options, and the custom CSS. So all the normal things you can tend to find in the advanced section with pretty much all the widgets that ship with Elementor and Elementor Pro. Okay, so before we wrap the video up, let's just take a quick look at exactly what these look like when they're used on the page and how they work. So all I'm gonna do is come down, make sure I've saved everything. As long as I've saved it, then I'm just gonna jump over and preview this page. So I'm gonna click on the exit and say, view my page. That'll open up a new tab and you can see we now have the page displayed in there. If I scroll down, there's our social networking buttons. So let's try one of those out. Let's try the Google one. 
So you click on there and you can see that now pops it up and it comes up and says, right, okay, what do you want to post and so on. So very quick and easy. Same with Twitter. We can click on that. That'll pop up and allows us to post a tweet and you can see it'll link in whatever page we're currently on, which is a pretty cool thing. So it means you don't have to worry about anybody sharing this, needing to worry about what link to put in there. It's automatically going to insert it in there. Well, that's all there is to this new feature. I think it's a great addition to Elemental. It means that it's one less plugin you've got to install. The fact you can go in and fine tune and configure this to make sure it works exactly the way you want it to and look exactly the way you want it to, I think it's a great addition to Elemental. Well, if you've enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to be kept up to date with all the new content we add every single week. If you have any comments, questions or feedback on this video or anything else on the channel, please pop those in the comment section below. And until next time, take care.